of the year, and I'm glad that all of you guys are here, and then you get to spend it with just the youth and just, um, you know, the people who come and show up. Um, so before we actually start worship and do what we usually do, we're going to have a speaker, our pastor. He's going to come up and he's going to talk um, just before that, and our actual um, sermon today is going to be led by Vitaly Vitikov. Um, so we're just going to have like two little short segments, I guess, parts. Um, and before that, I'm going to pray, and if we can all just stand up together, and we can start. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this Sunday that you have given it to us again, Lord, and that we're entering a brand new year and that we're just continuing this worship, God, and that we're continuing to grow in you, God. And I pray over all, all of us here today, God, the people who are going to be worshiping and the pastor and the speaker who are, are going to also going to be speaking your word, God. I pray that we open up our hearts to accept everything that you're going to be pouring in, Lord, and that we can just be willing to pour, pour the rest of it out, Lord, to the people that go to our schools, God, or the people that we work with, Lord. And I pray that you, Jesus, bless this new year that's coming forth just abundantly, Lord, that we grow as a ministry and that we grow as a church and we grow as a youth, Lord, and that there's going to be things in the future, God, that are just unforeseenable now, Lord. And I just pray that you take this whole service, Lord, and you lead it to go your way, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. So if we're going to have the pastor coming out and do a word. Слава Богу. Может быть, я вас не вижу, там мало. I don't see you. Может, поближе Maybe you сюда. can come closer, please. Друзья мои, у меня короткое слово для вас, так что вы настройтесь на то, что я долго говорить не буду. Я прочитаю только место Писания Ефесянам 5 глава 16 Дорожите временем, потому что дни лукавы. А выше сказано, не упивайтесь вином, от которого бывает распутство, но исполняйтесь духом. Я думаю, вино этого мира охватило умы людей, молодежи и взрослых тоже. I think the wine uh, of this world, it's captured the, the minds of people, especially young people, also other people too. Люди, когда напиваются или пьют, они живут не в реальном мире. When people drink, they're like living in kind of like in a diff different world or reality. А Господь призывает нас к реальному, к реальной жизни. But God is calling us to the real life, to the real service. Кто-то сказал из великих, что все на земле призрачно, только одна смерть реальна. Someone said that everything is like a mirage here that we see, but the death is real for you. Да, смерть иногда отрезляет людей. The death, when it comes, it's actually making people sober when, when people face in the death. Но почему-то противостоит поставил апостол Павел, исполняйтесь духом. But Apostle Paul says here, be filled with spirit. Вы знаете, исполняться духом, если бы так вот, как бутылку выпил, и так и другую бутылку. Здесь есть процесс исполнения духом. But when you want to be filled with spirit, it's not like you drink a bottle of wine. There is a process how you can be filled with spirit. Написано, отдайте себя Богу. First of all, it says, give away yourself to God on a service. Это приготовить место Христу в сердце, Духу Святому. At the same time, you have to prepare your heart, the place in your heart for the Holy Spirit. Я думаю, что кто хочет узнать об этом, узнает. If you want to know about it, whoever wants, he, he's going to find out about it. Я помню, когда меня Господь расположил, дал жажду, я, я тысячи километров Поехал прямо с работы туда, в тот город, в Волгоград, чтобы узнать больше о Духе Святом. When God gave me this desire to know about the Holy Spirit, I went about 100 kilometers to the certain city of Volgograd to know about the Holy Spirit. Я думаю, что 
жажда сегодня не такова во многих сердцах, как должно быть. И nowadays I don't see that the same thirst that I had in back days that I see now. В отношении времени, который мы выбираем сегодня, тоже есть проблема. How we choose in our time, there's a problem with that. Написано, дорожите временем, а время сегодня очень обманчивое. It says, value your time, but the, the, the days are deceptive, actually. Дни лукавы. The, the days are wicked. Только думаешь сделать уже не успел. Смотришь, уже кто-то тебя опередил. Or rather deceptive. So you want to try to do something, but the time is gone. You're late. You didn't do it. Раньше нужно было письмо написать, в конверт сложить, на почту направить, три дня, четыре подождать, а потом люди получали письма. In an early time, people have to write a letter, literally by by writings, and send it out in the mail, and then a certain time people can receive and read it. Представьте себе, сейчас текст месседж написал, и мгновенно человек в любом конце земли получает письмо. Люди полгода ехали, плыли в Америку. Сегодня несколько часов и уже здесь. People are traveling to United States of America for like six months to get here, but now we can like get here from other places, from other continents for like within maybe certain hours. Вокруг нас стиральные машинки, технологии, холодильники и другое, которое мы не замечаем. Мы как будто выросли в это. We have so much uh, stuff at our house, all automatic, like dishwashers and washing machine, and machines and all kinds of electronics that are helping us. So we like, look like it's has been like that forever, but it wasn't. Недавно кто-то из братьев рассказывал за одну сестру, бабушку, которая говорила, что раньше не было что кушать, раньше продуктов не было. As this old lady, uh, she was uh, telling that she didn't have enough food when she was young, and she was telling this story, and not, we hardly believe that. А внук говорит, ну надо было в холодильник открыть и взять, а что же вы? But the grandson says, uh, grand, grandma, why didn't you open up your refrigerator and get it? But there wasn't. Да, я думаю, что многие не понимают этого времени. Of course, many people they just just don't get that the time they, they don't understand the time that they're living into. Очень часто люди спрашивают, просят нас в чем-то помочь. У нас нет времени, нет времени. People are asking sometimes us to help them out, but we say we don't have enough time for you. Мы говорим, я занят чрезмерно, у меня занятия. И вот попробуй скажи что-нибудь. Often we say, well, I'm busy, I don't have time to, to do that for you. Но вот интересно, что и Богу мы тоже говорим, а нету времени, правда? For God, we can say the same thing. I don't have time for you, God. Is it true that we don't have time? А правда, что мы говорим Богу иногда, что я нет, у меня нет времени для... Of course, when we say to God, we don't have time, we know that we do have time, but we just don't want to devote our time to Him and just go around and saying that we don't have time. Я думаю, Господь говорит сегодня нам через слово примириться с Богом. But God says to us right now, just redeem, reconcile with God. Это слово важно. Примириться с Богом нужно всем. This is the word for all of us. We have to be in peace with God right now. Посмотрите, первый раз людям нужно примириться с Богом через покаяние. First time people get in peace with God when they repent first time. Но а последующие действия, последующие пути нам тоже часто нужно примиряться с Богом, даже если мы давно верующие. And later on in our uh, Christian life we still have to come come closer, get closer to God and keep peace with God, get closer to Him in our life. Чтобы быть с Богом всегда в решении, в выборе жизни, быть с Богом в домах, на работе, всегда Он защищает нас. In order to be with God everywhere, at home, at work, so He can protect and hide, guide us in our life. 
Но у нас нет времени для него. А вот скажите, а для кого или для чего у нас время есть? Давайте себе запишите, молча, не говорите мне, ответьте на этот вопрос, для кого или для чего у вас время есть. Make a note for you. What are you spending time for? What, where, where are you wasting your time for? Я думаю, что у нас есть время для себя. Of course, we do have time for ourselves. У нас есть время для своих развлечений. We have time to entertain ourselves. У нас есть время для того, чтобы сидеть часами в интернете. We do we do have enough time to spend on the internet. Spending hours watching all kinds of videos and просматривать все возможные программы, watching the programs and just browsing on the internet, wasting time. И там люди выходят как из холодильника. And then you, when you're done with, the, I mean, when you're watching and you can watch all kinds of stuff in there. Не исполненные духом святым. Of course, when we're done, when when we're done with that, you're not filled with spirit after you finish with. Когда мы общаемся с Богом, мы исполняемся духом святым. But when we connect it with God, we can be filled with spirit. Но когда мы общаемся не с Богом, но общаемся с миром через интернет. Это проблема наша. But when we have fellowship with this world through the internet, that's our problem. Я сам использую интернет для Божьей славы. I myself use personally internet, but for the God's glory. Um, в тех программах, которые я там ставлю, только проверяю, смотрю, за ночь 15 тысяч человек, в основном 10-15 тысяч бывает, читают слово, вот смотрят то, что я поставлю. When I put my program, the preaching, my preaching on, on the internet, I see overnight there's uh, thousands of people, few thousands of people that watched my sermon over, over the night, overnight. Дело в том, что вы можете использовать интернет для славы Божьей тоже. Surely, sure, you can use internet for the God's glory. You know, in your life. Для общения с теми людьми, для того, чтобы проповедовать Слово Божье, общаться для славы Божьей, если у вас есть время. You can have fellowship with people also through the internet, and you can preach through the internet at the same time. Змея и пчела из одного и того же цветка одна вытаскивает нектар, а другая яд. The serpent and the bee uh, from the same flower they can uh, extract. Uh, one would be the poison and the other would be the honey or the nectar. At the same time or at the same subject, you can uh, get for yourself life or death. Anything that you have, actually, you can use for God's glory and use it for God's glory. Но нужно быть в руках Божьих, нужно быть рядом с Богом, нужно быть в Нем. You have to be obedient to God, you have to be used by God and be close to God, so He can use it for that. Я прочитаю книгу Еремии, 6 глава в конце, 16-17 стих. I'm going to read Jeremiah 6 глава, 16-17 стих. Так говорит Господь. That says the Lord. Остановитесь на путях Stop ваших. Stop on your ways. И рассмотрите, и расспросите about, о путях древних, days, где путь добрый. Way, и идите по нему. Вот интересно, Бог называет древние пути. Какие это древние пути? Древние – это лучшие пути, это пути – Божьи пути. The ancient way is the God's way. Это пути Евангелия. Это пути Евангелия. Те пути, которые ведут к жизни. That's the way that leads to life. И дальше сказано, и найдете покой душам вашим. And it says, and you will find rest for your souls. Но они сказали, не пойдем. But those people said, no, we won't go. Вы очень хорошо знаете, как можно сказать, я не хочу, без слов, чтобы не обидеть человека, не оскорбить его, просто сказать, я не пойду. You know how to say, I don't want it but not to insult people at the same time, just to get around and say something Можно different. Можно молча 
сделать то, что ты хочешь, и никому не сказать «нет». А Господь говорит, что это и есть тот протест, который мы говорим, что не пойдем. You may even not say anything, but people will understand you're not going to do that for them or not following that way. И поставил я стражей над вами. And I and I put uh, watchers above you. Над вами есть стражи, которые сегодня. There is a watchers about you that are watching you, that are telling you something. Это служители, проповедники. These are ministers or servants or the preachers. Это ваши родители. And I could be your parents also. Я и сказал, слушайте звука трубы. And I said, listen to the sound of the, of the trumpet. Труба была предвестником подготовки к войне. And the trumpet was the instrument that prepared people for war. Труба предвещала о том, что враг приближается. It was telling about the enemy that was approaching. Труба предвещала опасное время могут что the есть трубы могут also was sounding uh, and telling about dangerous time that comes но они сказали не будем слушать but they say we're not going to listen to that и так напоминаю что so remind you again голос трубы можем слышать через духа святого you can see the you can hear the sound of the trumpet through the holy spirit через слово божье through the word of god и сегодня никому не надо говорить. You don't want to say to anyone. Не будем слушать. I we're not going to listen to. Это не хорошо воспринимается. This is not accepted good. Not good sound. But it sounds good at the same time. Not good. Если but it's not good. Если скажешь вот я не хочу слушать. Because if you say I don't want to hear that, of course it's it's bad. I look bad. Если маме скажешь, я не буду делать этого. If you say to your mom, I'm not going to be, be, uh, uh, listen to you. Лучше прослушать, как будто вы не услышал и не сделал. So it's easier to listen to us to agree, but not to do it and and done with it. И так голос трубы звучит через слово Божье. So the sounds of the trumpet is. Through the word of God. И чтобы не чтобы говорить, я не буду слушать, я не буду открывать Библию. And it's enough not to open up the Bible. You don't hear the voice of God. Не буду под контролем чем-то. I'm not going to be controlled by any authority. Я могу обмануть для родителей, для кого-то. А я читаю Библию. I can say to them, my parents. Пару месяцев назад я читал. I read the Bible, but even though I read maybe a couple months ago. Итак, я призываю вас, приглашаю. Будьте благоразумны. Be prudent. Дорожите временем. Value your time that you have. Не очень лукавые. The times are wicked. В Америке days are deceptive. В Америке грядут тяжелые времена. The times are that are coming that are really bad. Это голос трубы звучит. And now and it's a sound of the trumpet to you. Это дух святой напоминает. That's the Holy Spirit says right now. Да благословит вас Господь. God bless you all. Готовит сердце. Get ready. Get your heart ready. Готовить масло. Prepare the oil. И запасаться мудростью от Бога, чтобы противостать в духе святом тем тяжелым временам. And receive the wisdom from God so we can resist the times of evil that will come. И самое последнее. And the last thing. Для того, чтобы победить эти тяжелые времена, in order to defeat all of these times, нам нужно сегодня уже сражаться с львом и медведем. You have to battle today, wage war with the lion and bear right now. Как это было в дни as the, the, the David did in his time. Да, он вначале победил льва и медведя, а потом уже и Голиафа. He first was battling with the lion or the beast and the bear, and then he killed Goliath. Побеждая свой себя, а у вашей вашей плоти так много зверь, как зверь, например, не покорная. You also have to settle down with yourself to 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 defeat yourself, your selfishness. Победить мир. To defeat the world. И тогда мы сможем больше побеждать в нашей жизни. And then you can defeat more in your life the enemy. Да благословит вас Господь. God bless you all. Amen. 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 Amen.
So we're going to start with worship. If you guys can all stand up. All right, I'm going to say a quick prayer just so um, after the sermon is just kind of to wrap it up. So, um, Jesus, thank you for letting us come here today, Father. We thank you for letting us come here safely, Jesus, and being in this place all together, Lord, to worship you, to fellowship, Lord, to be with you, Father. And I ask that you thank you for the word that you've given us already, the short word. We have another one coming up, Jesus, so I ask that you bless the worship that we have right now and the second word that we're going to hear today, Jesus, and the rest of the time that we have today, Lord. Thank you for everything, Jesus. Amen. Strength of my heart forever I'll 
God, we are come to you in Jesus' name and we, we ask for your blessing and presence. I believe that you are here in your in Holy Spirit in this place in our hearts through worship, through word, through prayers. And I ask that you would prepare our hearts to receive your word, that we would be close to you than ever before in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys may be seated. Praise God. Church, and uh, I think that probably um, I would like to ask for, for your uh, patience, a little bit of time, just a little bit, and uh, uh, be really careful because 
uh, I believe that I have a word from God. And as a human being, I have a challenge to, to express myself. But I believe I can, with the help of Holy Spirit, I can share this word with you guys. And I think it's um, probably the most important uh, service of this year because it's probably the last service as a church, last Sunday. And uh, as I was examining myself, like I think all of us do, you know, uh, the, the subject that I will share today is uh, being connected with God continually, staying connected with God continually. It's something that really uh, bothers my heart and my spirit quite often. And as I looking back for the, the year that we lived already, and I just make a comparison, uh, compare whenever we have a cell phone and uh, when we lose connection, when we lose service, we are so quick to fix that problem. We are so quick to make everything back connected. But then again, when we are losing connection with Holy Spirit, when we are losing connection with God, sometimes it takes weeks, maybe months, maybe days, before we realize that we step back too far away from God. And uh, I will read a few passages from different places of Bible. And uh, the first one, it's one of the, my that I really like this passage in Psalm 73, the Psalm of Asaph, 73, uh, verse 23 and down. Yet I am always with you. I want you to pay attention to this word when he uses this word. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you will take me into glory. Whom have I have in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire beside you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Those who are far from you will perish. Verse 28. But as for me, it is good to be near God. But as for me, it is good to be near God. And when I was reading this psalm, I noticed that he's saying, I am continually with you. One of the translations says, I am continually with you. And as a result, he said, you hold me by my right hand. Why not left hand? The right hand, it's a guiding hand. When we point to, into the, the direction to someone, we usually use right hand. Left hand. It's our, our daily needs when we go to work, we go to school, we prepare our food, we make our choices, daily choices. This is left hand. But he said, when I'm continu continually with you, you will guide me by my right hand. In other words, when we are close to God, when we are connected with God, he will guide us, our life, into, in the direction of his will. And afterward, you will receive me to your glory. Just a few verses and the whole life, we can see the whole life of man of God, that he is continually being connected to God. And he said, there is nothing on this earth that I desire more than you. It's so many promises in this passage that God gave us. And the main thing, that I would like, I'm going to share with you, am I continually connected with God? And the importance of being connected to God or with God and His Spirit, we can see in verses 27 and 28, it says, those who are far from you will perish, but as for me, it is good for me to draw near God. The closer we get to God, the bigger He is in our life. The closer we get to Jesus, to his spirit, the bigger he is in our life. Asaph says, I am continually with you. When we are connected 
to God continually. Our heart fills with joy, with peace, with presence of God in our life. When we continually connected with God, we can be fruitful for His glory, for the people around us. And when we read the chapter 15 of book of John, it's a very famous chapter, and all of you people, you know this chapter quite good. And it says about the, that Jesus says about the, God is the gardener. Jesus is the true vine. And all of us are the branches. And if you pay attention to this chapter, Jesus saying it's all about being connected to God. The whole chapter, Jesus said, abide in me, remain in me. I think in one of the translations, it says seven times, when Jesus repeats seven times, remain in me, in me, abide in me. In other words, he said, he's saying, stay continually connected to God. We all have cell phones nowadays. We carry our cell phones everywhere we go. Some people even probably sleep and put the cell phone next to them. And the most important thing for our cell phone, what can it be? Is it connected? Is it connected? I remember, you know, the value of the cell phone is not even in the price that we pay for. The value in the cell phone that we have is it have a connection, good connection. I remember at work a while ago when I was eating lunch and one of the co-workers, he was trying to talk to somebody on, on his cell phone. And I can tell that he was really getting frustrated because his connection wasn't there, his service wasn't there. And he was getting, getting really upset. He was trying to repeat himself many times over and over and at the end he grabbed that cell phone and he just threw it on the ground and broke that cell phone. Probably cost a lot of money. But at that very moment, the most important thing for him was, is it connected? And uh, just a couple months ago, the same situation, while I was same at lunch with my friends at work, one of, the, one of my co-workers, he would grab his cell phone, he would stand up, and he would walk to the closer to window, and he would tuck on his cell phone, he would search whatever he needed to be searching. And when he came back, he said, I'm, I apologize, but I have better connection there. That's what he said. And it's kind of struck, struck me so hard. This previous person, he did not know all, all he needed to do, just go a little bit closer to window, a little, little bit closer to that corner. He would get better connection. But instead, he get so frustrated, he broke it. And the other guy, he knew where to go. And as a child of God, do you know the place? Do you know, do you know the time when you are connected to God the most? And the question is tonight, are you staying connected with God continually? The true value of our life is not how you present yourself. The true value of our life is not how you present or how you speak, how, how you sing, how you preach or do something. The true value in our life, of our life, are we being connected with Holy Spirit. We get so frustrated when we have no connection to our cell phone. We want to fix this problem right away. We are not willing to wait three, four, five days before we get connection back online. It's so important to us. We are going to reset the cell phone. We are going to call provider. We are going to replace the phone if we have to. We want to get back online really quickly. It happened in my life many times. But then, yet again, when our spirit disconnected with God, we're not in a hurry to call our provider. We're not in a hurry to call our provider who gave us this gift of life and time. We cannot wait three, four, five days before we get online on our cell phone. But quite often, we just ignore that separation in our spirit with Holy, with Holy Spirit. Many people, 
you know, when you lose that connection on a cell phone, all you have the pictures. There is also always a picture that you can scan through. And the pictures, they represent a previous history that happened before. They don't represent what's happening right now. And uh, as I was preparing this sermon, God spoke to my heart that you are living in a history of God's presence. But God told me that he wants all of us and me have that continually presence of Holy Spirit in our life. And the Asaph said that nothing, nothing in this earth can substitute the presence of God in our life. Nothing, he said, I desire beside, beside you. There is nothing in this life that can substitute the presence of God. And uh, if we lose our connection with Jesus, with Holy Spirit, Jesus said that we can come to him. Come to him and be filled with his presence in our life. Are you connected with God? This is the question. Jesus told, abide in me, remain in me, stay connected continually. And David says in Psalm 16, he said, I keep my eyes always on the Lord alone. He's my inheritance. He's my cup. You keep my lot secure. And in verse 6, Psalm 16, he said, very important thing. He said, the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places boundary lines in our life we need to have those boundary lines the boundary lines that separates two lots they separate two states or, or, or two two properties the boundary lines and we all need those boundary lines to keep us secure in the presence of God sometimes we cross that line and I, I think I believe that probably all of you experience that when you would cross that line, you would say something, you would do something, and then you realize you crossed that line and you got disconnected from the presence of God. We need to continually keep fighting. We need to know where and when to go to be connected with Jesus. We need to continually pray, continually pray in spirit, continually remain in his word, continually Remain in, in his presence, in the presence of each, each other, in the presence of, of being here in the church. You remember a very, very uh, powerful point that I just read it a few days ago throughout the Christmas time when Mary, when she received the word from the angel that she had a baby. And when angel departed, she, it, it says in the Bible that she would get up and she would almost, it says in a hurry, she almost would, would, would run to her relative Elizabeth. And she spent three months there. It's a very powerful point to me that we need to continually be in presence of God when we get together. When we get together around people who are filled with the same spirit. Who are not filled with this world or with all the things that can, they can offer to, to you. But be around the people who are filled with the Holy Spirit. Be in the word of God. The closer you get to God, the bigger he is in your life. And quite often, this very cell phone, this little device that are connecting us to the whole world, give us the world of opportunities. This very little device can separate us from the presence of God. And I want to read two more verses. The first one would be Samuel. First book of Samuel, if you have your Bible, please open up with me. It's very important that I would like to share. First book of Samuel, chapter 14, verse 36 and 37. Saul said, let us go down and pursue the Philistines by night and plunder them till down. And let us not leave one of them alive. Do whatever seems best to you, they replied. But the priest said, notice the priest, he just, he just show up there, just suddenly. They were, ready go, they were ready to go to war. They had all planned out. They have enough, enough equipment and weapons to uh, win this war. And they were so certain. They said, let us go down. 
we're going to chase, chase them down. We, 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 will, we will by night plunder them till down and let us not leave one of them alive. It's really a bold statement. But then priest shows up. The priest represents Holy Spirit in our life. The priest represents Holy Spirit in our life. And what he said, let us inquire or draw near God here. Not in two weeks, not in a couple months, not next year. He said, let us inquire of God here. And like I said, the priest is representing the Holy Spirit in our life. So many times, as I was reading these two verses, God once again spoke very strongly in my heart. It is not your plans or desires that are important. It's not how you preach. It's not how you sing. Are you staying connected with Holy Spirit? The most important question is, are you connected to Jesus? Are you filled with Holy Spirit? Are you filled with His Word, His love? Are you connected with God continually? And they were ready to go to fight. They were ready to do whatever they, they wanted to do. But Holy Spirit told them, come close to God. And if you read the next verse, listen what it says. So... Saul asked God, shall I go down and pursue the Philistines? Will you give me them into Israel's hand? But God did not answer him that day. When I read this verse, it's kind of, you know, uh, I got a little bit of a, not scared, but you know, that uh, tremble a little bit. You know, they're ready to go to war. They're ready to fight. And then priest told them, let's pray to God. Let's get close to God. And then as he was praying to God, the Bible says, God did not answer him. In other words, they didn't even realize that they got, they got separated from God. They didn't even realize they got so used to their daily needs, daily plans, da daily, daily fights or whatever they have to do in, in your life. You don't even sometimes realize that you got disconnected from God. God did not answer them that day. So therefore, so Saul said, come here all of you who are leaders of the army and let us find out what sin has been committed today. You see, there is a sin that is disconnected us from God. There is many, many things in our life that can disconnect us from presence of God. Just a few minutes ago, they were ready to go to war, but without being connected to God. And Holy Spirit is saying and talking to each of us tonight personally, this evening. And God said that he wants us to draw near him today, tonight. And Paul says in the second Corinthians chapter 6, he said, We urge, urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor... I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. And then he said, we put no stumbling block in anyone's path. Stumbling block that can disrupt or disconnect us from being close to God. Stumbling block. What is it in your life? Like Pastor mentions already, what can be in our life that this stumbling block would keep you separated from God? We need to ex examine our hearts. And God said, now is the time of favor. Now is the time of salvation of God. And I believe that there is someone who needs God's favor and love of Jesus to be connected again. There is someone who needs salvation of God through Jesus Christ. And the Bible says... Now and here is the time to draw near God. And one more verse I would like to read. It's book of Judges, Samson. Book of Judges, chapter 15. We're going to look just two verses. And then we are going to pray. But before, I would like to mention a few points here. Book of Judges 15, 18 
and 19. Right after God gave Samson huge deliverance, huge victory, when he, when he um, killed 1,000 Philistines with the jaw of the donkey. You remember that story? God gave him that victory. And look, look what happened later, uh, right after that. Chapter 15, Judges, verse 18. Because he was very thirsty, he cried out to the Lord. And that's what he said. You have given your servant this great victory. Must I now die of thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised? Then God opened up the hollow place in Lehi, and water came out of it. When Samson drank, drank his strength returned, and he revived. It's a very interesting story that God used Samson so powerful. He gave him this great victory. He uh, killed those 1,000 people, Philistines. And then right after that, he feel he's thirsty. And he understand. It doesn't matter how God used him here. But he need to be connected to God continually and personally. And he realized it's not the victory that God gave him. God used him through his gift, through his talent. But God trying to show all of us tonight that it's so important to be connected to God continually. And it says he, cried, he prayed or cried out to Lord. And he said, you have, you have given this great deliverance by the hand of your servant. But now shall I die of thirst? And God split open the hollow place and the water came out of it. And when he drank, his spirit returned and he revived. And I like, the, very like, I like it a lot, the uh, translation, one of the translations, it says the name of the spring, the spring of him who prayed. The spring of him who prayed. There is no source of spring water if there is no need of it. If there is no prey. You see, the God will open up his source of his presence only inside the circles where the people are hungry for it. Where the people are crying out to God. Where, where, where the people are praying to God. And he prayed to God. And God gave him that water. When he drank that water, it says he, re, he's, he revived God gave him that blessing. And here is the point. God gave him a huge deliverance over his enemies. But at the end of the day, he was dying of thirst. Why? It is not what you do for God. Or it is not what God does through you. Will keep your life spiritually. But how you and me continually being connected with God. With his presence. With his Spirit, with all the mighty presence of God that day, he could have died by the end of the day because he needed to be revived by the presence of God. And I believe that we all need that fresh presence, fresh anointing of presence of God for, for us in our life, in our homes, in our families, in our churches. God can use you through your gifts and talents. But you will not survive by your talents alone. Because the gift that God gives you, they're for the purpose of serving others. But God wants us to revive all of us tonight. It's not the gift that God gave you will keep you alive. But us continually drinking that water. I believe that when we cry out to God because... Our spirit is thirsty for living water. God will split open the heavens and living water of his spirit will revive all who thirsty for him. And uh, maybe you're trying to survive by doing something for God. Maybe you're trying to survive spiritually by being a good person. It's not going to help you very much or very long. God wants you and me be close to him. Abide in Him. Remain in Him. In His presence. So many people. So many churches. They're trying to 
survive spiritually by doing something, by preaching good, by singing good, by doing some good, good things. But we need to be crying out to God for His presence and presence of His Holy Spirit. And uh, I don't want this church to be just another church. Just another church. There is thousands of churches. I don't want this this church to be just to be a good place to be. I want this church, and including myself, to be full of people who are thirsty for God, who are crying out to God like Samson did when he realized it's not the gift, I need the presence of God. I need his presence, his water. I want this place, this church, all of you guys, to be hungry for God, hungry for his presence, hungry for his spirit. Samson realized very quickly that it's not the gift, but actual presence of God in my life. And uh, we are going to pray. Let's stand all together. And I believe that we all as a church, we all need to realize that we need God grace, God presence, that fresh anointing like never before maybe in this past year. And I want all of us just to pray to God. All of us just to cry out to God. So he would open up the heavens like the Bible says. So he would revive our spirit. Revive, revive our lives for his glory. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray for... And then we are going to sing. As we are going to pray, if you guys need a prayer, you can come up here. And we're going to pray together. Отец наш небесный, я благодарю Тебя и славлю, что Ты Бог великий, Ты Бог живой и всемогущий. Господь, я благодарю Тебя и славлю, что Ты показываешь сегодня нам, Господь, что Ты источник живой воды, Ты источник жизни. И Иисус, Ты однажды сказал, кто жаждет, иди ко Мне и пей. Господь, сегодня мы стоим пред Тобою, Господь. Отец, мы нуждаемся сегодня в Тебе, Господь, в Твоем, Господи, в этом пробуждении, Господь. Отец, мы нуждаемся в Тебе, Господь. Господь, мы много старались сделать, Господь, и мы делали, что могли, Господь. Но мы понимаем, Господь, что источник Духа Святого – это есть Ты, Господь. И сегодня мы просим Тебя, Господь, чтобы пришло это пробуждение в наши сердца, в наши дома, Господь. Отец, во имя Иисуса Христа, Господь, когда Самсон, Господь, обратился к Тебе, Господь, он, Господи, закричал, Господи, Ты открыл, Господи, этот источник, и он пил эту воду. Господи, мы сегодня нуждаемся в Тебе. Я благодарю Тебя, Господь Великий, что Ты источник жизни. Слава Тебе, Господь. Отец Небесный, благослови нас. Господь, постоянно в Тебе пребывать, Господь, чтобы никто и ничто, Господь, не разлучил, Господи, эту близость с Тобою, Господь. Боже, прости нас, Господь, что мы так часто допускаем многим вещам прийти в нашу жизнь, Господь, которые разлучают нас с Тобою в этой близости, Господь. Отец, прости каждого из нас, Господь, за этот прошедший год, Господь. Мы так часто, Господь, попускали, Господь, эти вещи в нашу жизнь. Отец, мы сегодня просим через кровь Иисуса Христа, очисти наши сосуды, очисти наши сердца и наполни, Господь, Твоей, Господь, благодатью. Во имя Иисуса благослови. Благослови, Господь, церковь Твою. Благослови молодежь, благослови детей, Господь, чтобы каждый, Господь, был наполнен Духом Твоим Святым. Господь, во имя Иисуса. Мы благословляем друг друга. Мы благословляем, Господи, во имя Твое, Господь, чтобы имя Твое светилось в нашей жизни. Господь, мы благодарим Тебя и славим, что в Тебе наша победа, в Тебе, Господи, наша значимость, Господь, в Твоем присутствии и нашем присутствии в Тебе. Мы благодарим Тебя за все. Слава Тебе и поклонение Тебе. I stand upon the solid rock of faith in Christ. This steadfast hope shall not break apart within the trial. I am assured His promises will never fail. As long as life remains, He is faithful. God is 
is patient, God is kind, He does not envy, He does not boast, His ways are higher than my own, His thoughts consume the great unknown, of this alone I am sure, my God is love. I draw my breath under his created wind swept sky. I know my hope shall last long after my flesh retires. From dusk until the dawn he calls his children home. His righteous love outlasts generations. God is patient. God is kind, He does not envy, He does not boast, His ways are higher than my own, His thoughts consume the great unknown, of this alone I am sure.
Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this time that we came together, that we have this time to serve you, Lord, and that our worship team, God, is here, and they're so great, and that, that we're just able to just keep worshiping you, Lord, and just able to unite together, Jesus, as one, as our youth unites and our parents come, Lord, and that we're able to just worship you together, God. And I pray that you continue helping us grow in you, Lord, and you continue helping this service grow, God. 
And I just pray that, Lord, we don't stumble, Jesus, and when we do, God, we keep getting up, Jesus, and that we just keep on following you, Lord. And that we just keep staying motivated, Lord, to find you and search for you, God, and for your face. And that we don't just do these things, God, by our own will or by our own understanding, Lord. But we do it because this is what you called us to do, Lord. And that you pour out of us. And Jesus, you, you show us the way, Lord. God, and we just pray. right guys so i have a few announcements before anyone heads out if you guys just want to sit down during them that would be great so we all know that new year's is tomorrow um so those of you guys who are going to be coming um i think it's at 10 right here yana 10 30 here um, also, apart from that, um, I don't know how many of you guys know that we are still collecting things for, uh, I think, young adults or teenage um, kids, so just like homeless children. If you guys have socks, extra socks, if you have um, just clothing, undergarment type of stuff, if you bring them here and if you get in contact with Oleg or uh, Marina Sushkova, yeah? Um, yeah, so just all of that stuff, we're still doing that, we're still collecting um, we also have street ministry that is next Saturday, I think the 11th, right, 11th? Yeah, that's going to be at the Capitol meeting at 1045. And what else? We also have a guest speaker. Um, I'm going to get his name because I forgot what his name was. He's from Youth with a Mission, and I think that's next week, right? Um, his name was... Daniel DeSalvo, DeSalvo, DeSalvo. So bring your friends, bring people, um, guest speaker next week. So all of you guys show up, hopefully. And I don't know if we have any other announcements. It's all good? It's all good? Yeah, I have a couple words to say. Um, Lifeline, beloved brothers and sisters, um, one more page, uh, one more day actually, until we're gonna close 2018, maybe a, I would say book probably, a Lifeline Church book. So, and we're gonna start 2019 Lifeline Church book. It's gonna, gonna include 365 days. Each day will include probably some happiness, some sadness, some problems, and you're going to solve some problems. But I want to say, just keep in mind, God say, every day I renew my blessings. Every single day. Those 365 days. If you're going to have those problems, if you're going to have some challenges, just keep in mind, God will help you go through those problems. He's faithful. And he can do that. Thank you for being, you know, be supportive in Lifeline. You guys are awesome. You young generation, you're awesome. You've been faithful. You've been in practice in the Lifeline uh, worship team. You did a lot. Thank you. Really appreciate, and we really appreciate you, Lifeline. And I believe 2018 going to be, we're going to have more projects, some in the church and also, but probably the biggest project, project draw it closer to God. Find him, seek him. And Happy New Year. God bless you. Everyone, your families, your kids, and young generation, God bless you. Thank you.